Buenas and good morning, everyone. Uh, we're back on second reading. And um, Senator Ogan, you are recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, thank you for recognizing me. This is on Bill Number 363-34. Uh, there's an amendment that's being circulated as we speak, as I speak, and it's to delete the word corporate in that particular amendment that was initially proffered by myself yesterday. So, Madam Speaker, hopefully with uh, your consideration and the members of the body, because this particular amendment was extensively discussed yesterday, that uh, we'll be able to proceed accordingly with this adoption. So the, the motion is to replace the amendment that I have proffered yesterday with the version that you have before you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. All right. Bill 363 is currently at the end of our second reading file, and he's making a motion to deal with this bill first, since it's a correction to a bill that's already, that was in the third reading. Is there any objection to uh, addressing this bill first? Hearing no objection, motion carries. And the motion to amend the bill as was passed out. Senator, could you please explain again the difference between this and, and the amendment yesterday that was on the floor? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senators, uh, if you recall the amendment that was circulated and you see the version that you have before you, this one would delete the word corporate, so it would, it would be applicable to income taxes uh, as it applies to the applicant. So it would delete corporate from uh, different components of the, the paragraph. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. On the Ugin Amendment, is there anyone who would like to be recognized? On the Ugin Amendment, would you like to close, Senator Ugin? On the Ugin Amendment, are, are there any objections? Hearing no objection, motion carries. Senator Ogden on the bill, on the motion. Just to move for the previous question, Madam, Madam Speaker, to place it in voting file. On the previous Thank question, you. to place bill number 363 on the voting file, I mean, no, on the third reading. Is there any objection to placing bill number 363 as amended on the third reading file? Hearing no objection, motion carries. Colleagues, we'll now move to the next bill on our agenda. That's 374, and I'll recognize Senator Ada. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I move to place Bill 374-34 uh, into the third reading, and I would like to uh, discuss it, please. That's 374 as introduced. As introduced, yes, ma'am. Please proceed. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, during the uh, budget uh, discussions, uh, the budget discussions for FY19, uh, there was a provision in there which, uh, relative to um, the levying additional taxes on real property improvements valued at $1 million. And during the discussion, uh, it was clearly the intent that uh, we were talking about this levy being on improvements that were a $1 million or more. However, in the bill, the two words or more was not present. So as a result, uh, the Department of Revenue and Tax said, hey, it's not, it says, the bill says, the law says that you only levy that increased uh, tax on 
real property improvements valued at $1 million, no more, no less. So a, a request for opinion was made to the Attorney General and, in, um, and to, the question was whether the additional property tax is limited to improvements valued at exactly $1 million. And the answer provided by the Attorney General was yes. Uh, the plain language of the law is clear and unambiguous and makes the additional real property tax applicable only to improvements on all land property in Guam valued at exactly $1 million. So what Bill 374 does is it provides the corrective language on page one, line 13, and it inserts the word uh, or more so that then uh, real property improvements that exceed $1 million uh, shall be subject to the, uh, uh, the, the new tax rates. So uh, that, Madam Speaker, is the, um, the, the gist of Bill 374. To the response, Senator Adam. Um, colleagues, we also have circulated the letter that Senator refer referred to um, from the Attorney General, November dated November 27th. On the main motion, any member wish to be heard? We'll take Senator Morrison and Acting Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to share my concerns with the measure which unlike its predecessor, Section 3 of Public Law 34116, the FY19 Budget Law, is being as addressed as a separate independent proposal. As we all remember, it was just a few months ago in August, to be exact, when Public Law 34-116, Bill 323 at the time, barely passed this legislature with only eight senators voting in favor and seven senators opposing. Madam Speaker, I supported Bill 323 because I agreed with most but not all of its provisions, provisions, particularly as this legislature decided just one month prior to acting on this year's budget bill to reverse its provision or previous decision to implement a sales tax. I supported the sales tax proposal because I believed then and still believe today that such a tax policy is a fair and transparent approach to taxation, which is a stark contrast to our current GRT policy. Madam Speaker, included in the FY19 Budget Act was the very proposal that is now being offered through Bill 374. With its predecessor in the FY19 Budget Act attached to, do, to the now permanent 1% percentage point increase in the business privilege tax, along with tobacco tax increases. Let's be very clear on this issue so that members of our community understand that Bill 374 is a tax increase, specifically on real property. Madam Speaker, even if we set aside major concerns such as fairness and enforcement, the question remains surrounding how a policy proposal such as Bill 374 will, will adversely impact tenants of apartment units and other multiple dwelling or family dwellings. With seven members having opposed the FY19 budget bill because of serious concerns surrounding tax, in, tax increases such as this, Madam Speaker, I too will carefully consider the merits of Bill 374 before making a final decision. Madam Speaker, in closing, and with only a few weeks before the new administration and new legislature take office, 
I believe our new governor and lieutenant governor made it very clear during the campaign that they oppose tax increases and instead have committed to aggressively pursuing other means or other measures, other strategies to address our government's fiscal challenges. I also believe that many, if not all, of the new senators elect are on record having opposed tax increases. And in light of at least seven members in this legislature opposing the most recent budget because of certain tax increases and in proposals such as this. So Madam Speaker, I move to send Bill 374 back to committee so that we provide the new administration and legislature the opportunity to address various fiscal issues. Madam Speaker, this is not only a fair approach, I think it's the prudent route given just weeks, if not days, left uh, before the new administration and new legislature take office. And I think it's, it's clear that uh, given their statements publicly, maybe uh, this body should carefully consider that this new administration uh, has other, uh, as stated earlier, uh, ways of addressing these challenges. So I thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank you, Senator Morrison. On the Morrison motion to send the bill back to committee, any member wish to be heard? Senator Ada, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, first of all, I will, I, I do object to send it back, sending it back to committee. I think uh, this matter was uh, thoroughly discussed during the uh, budget uh, discussions. Um, and I, I believe that it was very clear uh, during the discussions that uh, the intention of the legislature was that the uh, tax levy was to be on improvements that were a million dollars or more. The failure to act on this uh, immediately uh, will inevitably result in a shortfall of approximately eight million dollars uh, from the projected FY19 revenues. Uh, so I, I, I rise in objection of the motion to send it back to committee. Thank you, Senator Ada. There's been an objection to the motion to send back. All those in favor of sending the bill back to committee, please indicate by raising your hand. Motion fails. Senator Morrison, anything further? Acting Speaker, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I share the concerns of the previous speaker, and um, when, this, when this provision was put into the budget, um, uh, it was not enforced that there would be an additional real property taxes uh, levied on those property owners whose properties were valued over a million dollars. It was held in abeyance, you know, pending this legal opinion or because of their legal dispute. And, um, but passage of this bill would, would provide that that levy be implemented immediately. That's what the AG has opined. Um, the levy was passed when we were dealing with that FY19 budget. We were, it was prior to the closing, of course, of, of FY 2018. And it was prior to first quarter revenues of 2019. And so we were very much estimating I had asked that, um, and I'm asking now that, that uh, the office of our Office of Finance and Budget uh, be able to provide us information on the FY 2018 actual revenues and the FY 2019 actual and projected revenues during the com Committee of the Whole. Uh, and that is, this is especially important because recently the executive branch stated that there was a surplus for tw FY 2018. But in another recent report, the administration transferred funds from various departmental accounts, and I have 
been notified by at least one agency that the Department of Administration will not be releasing the final allotments for FY 2018 for, for that agency, and I suspect that there are others. So I think it would be helpful to have OFB brief all of us and in, in turn brief the new senators that will be coming in um, one last time on its interpretation of actual revenues received in FY 2018 versus what we had anticipated and projected and what we had anticipated would be the impact of the Trump uh, the Federal Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 on gross tax receipts, real property tax, individual income taxes, and corporate taxes in FY 2018. And we also projected such impacts for FY 2019 when we made the budget. And because of those projected impacts, uh, the legislature found it necessary to add on this additional real property tax to make up for the shortfall. And so I guess what I just really want to show to the public while we are deliberating this real property tax once more is whether it is necessary or whether indeed there is a surplus and this is not necessary anymore. And I think we will be able to at least closer um, project whether FY 2018 met, met the revenue, according to the governor, we've exceeded the revenue that was anticipated in FY 2018, and whether our first quarter of 2019 is meeting or exceeding the anticipated revenue, even without this real property tax um, hike, the levy. I think this information will be helpful to us senators in deliberating this bill today. It would also be helpful to the new senators who are coming in uh, and will be immediately having to deal with, with this or similar issues. And I think uh, for me, I prefer, uh, we could hear it from any different sources in the administration, I guess. We could, we could compile different sources and have them in here. But, Perhaps if, if OFB is available and if they're not available, uh, any other um, option, but that would be my preference, is to hear it from our own capable OFB as to what, uh, you know, they were the ones who were actually able to come up with predictions when the administration was not able to on what the effects of the Trump tax was going to be. Trump, And so, so I thought that was a great benefit to us and I, I'm just asking if my colleagues would consider if we could, could go into the Committee of the Whole. That would be my motion, to go into Committee of the Whole and hear this information. Sidhu Smasi, Madam Speaker. Sidhu Smasi, Acting Speaker. On the motion to resolve into Committee of the Whole, any member wish to be heard? Senator Ada and then Senator Uggen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, um, first of all, I would object going to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, secondly, in terms of, um, you know, the fact that the administration has um, declared that there's going to be a surplus uh, really can be interpreted in many ways. It means that they did not spend, uh, I, I forget, I think, I forget what was the amount that they said they were, they, they expected surplus, um, 10 million or something like that. And all that really means is that they held back on spending um, of $10 million, and therefore the projected revenues are going to be $10 million um, you know, in excess of what was expended. But were those really dollars? I don't know. But what's important, I think, is when this bill was introduced, we did get a fiscal note from the Bureau of Budget and Management, and they stated in that fiscal note that the potential impact of this situation that we are in with the lack of two words, the potential impact is estimated at approximately $8 million. This is consistent with estimates given by the Office of Finance and Budget when passed by the Guam Legislature and now Public Law 34-116. So, however which way we want to skin this onion is that the FY19 budget or projected revenue uh, without this uh, levy, uh, in fact, going forward as was intended, will result in at least right out, coming out of the starting gate, $8 million shortfall. 
And uh, again, you know, we can, we can be real frugal and cut the budget in by 50% and good Lord, we're going to have a big surplus at the end of the year. So I think we need to move on. Um, and, and the addition of the two words I think is important. And so going into the committee of the whole, I do not think uh, is, is necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Addison. Senator, again, you're recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, with all due respect to the Chair of Appropriations, this is a measure that uh, would identify whether, in fact, there's a requirement for the additional revenues. And if we take a look at some of the comments that have been shared by representatives of the administration, in just the recent conclusion of fiscal year 18, I believe that there was a recognition that there was a surplus. So how could that surplus have occurred? One is by virtue of the adjustment in rates, the 50% adjustment in rate, rates, or 25% adjustment in the GRT, tax from 4 to 5% for a timeline of six months. That contributed to a possible budget surplus for fiscal year 18. Then there was the tax amnesty program, which generated in excess of 25 plus million dollars. But you know, Madam Speaker, I know that there's been extensive deliberation and discussion about aggressively going out there and collecting tax receivables, outstanding tax receivables, and providing our Department of Revenue and Taxation with additional personnel and resources to pursue those revenues. So if those things come to fruition, the real question is, where are we with the budget today in terms of actual revenue receipts and what is the anticipated revenue projection for the balance of the fiscal year. And I believe that the speaker's request to just know and understand that so that we can get our people to also be on the same page and understand that because this body passed a budget, we need to ensure that that budget is properly funded. But if already there's an anticipated increase or surplus beyond the budget that was passed, then that would be good information for members of this body to have and for the people of Guam to understand without having to further implement tax increases. So I certainly uh, support the motion to uh, go into committee in the hall and to look at the actual revenues and the projected revenues for the balance of this fiscal year. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Egan. On the motion to resolve into the Committee of the Whole, any other member wish to be heard? There's been an objection to that motion, so we'll call for the question. All those in favor of resolving into the Committee of the Whole, please indicate by raising your hands. Motion fails. Acting Speaker, you're recognized. I have no further comments on the bill, Madam Speaker. I, of course, I don't, well, I don't object to adding the words or more. My problem is, yeah, we are pretty much repassing the real property tax increase. And so I feel like that's really the issue that we need information on and that we need, we are voting on as opposed to just adding the mere words. It's, it's really, this levy has been deemed um, ineffective but by passing this bill, we will be making it effective. So I, I, I believe that's, that's really the important issue and I'm, I'm unable to determine some, some things without further information. Suzu Smasi. Suzu Smasi, Acting Speaker. On the main motion, any other member wish to be heard? On the main motion, Senator Estevez, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I we just want the record to be very clear that I was opposed and have been opposed to real property tax increases of any kind, of any sort, of any amount um, placed on anybody. However, I've always been very cautious, and I've said this previously on the record, and I just want to reaffirm the statement, as was alluded to by um, a retiring speaker as well, if we think 
that this real property tax value that improvements of over a million is targeting some specific sector, the rich sector, we are dead wrong. And the public needs to be very well, well aware that that's not who we are targeting. There are maybe a handful of homes, single residential homes that are valued at over a million. What we are targeting is the tourist industry. But really what we're targeting are the multi-dwelling residences, apartment complexes, commercial spaces. This is a tax on the people who don't own properties because this is passed through tax is gonna go on these apartment complexes that house families with low income and that, and that rate is gonna be passed on to them. That is a fact. And so I'm very concerned in what we're doing. There, there were other tax proposals that have come before this body, and there are many things that we can consider. But once we go down the road of taxing the land beneath people's feet, that, that goes into everything that we do. If we think a GRT is a regressive tax, we have to be very cognizant and mindful of what we're doing when we increase real property taxes. I understand there is the potential for an $8 million deficit, but what we tell ourselves that this is the only option because it's in the budget, this, this legislature has revisited measures before. And that's the whole part and the whole basis of a deliberative body that we can come back to this and we can solve it. We can solve the $8 million deficit potential deficit in other ways. If there's a surplus that can cover it, for example, which has been that motion to, to go down that route has been denied. But another option is to cut. It has been stated before and I want to reiterate, it has been, it has been on, placed on public record that the income administration is opposed to tax increases. And so this is an opportunity to allow them to protect the people of Guam from tax increases and to apply solutions that will work or that could potentially work without having to increase taxes because there's no going back from that. This is not a temporary, in the AG's opinion, there is no sunset provision in the budget. This is a new tax. And once that hits the market and once inflation goes up, I can guarantee that it's not gonna come back down. And so with that, Madam Speaker, I've opposed this tax, this particular tax and any land taxes from the beginning, and I continue to oppose it now. And I urge my colleagues to please consider. There's time to, to look at other situations. We have a new incoming legislature, a new incoming administration with new ideas. And we can't sit here and think that we have all the ideas and we have all the answers right now because it doesn't seem like we do. And if there's the potential and the chance, a small chance, we can avoid the tax increase by waiting and allowing these fresh minds that the people of Guam have placed their confidence in to review it and find an alternative solution before we increase taxes on our people, then we have a duty to do so. And so I stand in support of, of my colleagues' position that we should, we should wait, we should hold on. We should allow time. We should analyze the new fiscal data regarding the potential for a surplus. Because at the end of the day, if there's an $8 million deficit and we have a short f shortfall that we can look at legislation possibly to carry it into the next year to fill that gap, we should do that. But if we're looking at a spending spree of that surplus in f next year with the new administration, with the new legislature, then that's just piss poor. That's poor fiscal policy. And so thank you for the opportunity to speak, Madam Speaker. Um, and, and again, I stand in objection to this measure and any, any increase on land taxes and improvement taxes um, on our people. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Stevis. On the main motion, any other member wish to be heard? On Bill 374. We'll take a brief one minute recess.
the legislature is back in session. We're returning to Bill 374 as introduced. On the main motion, any member wish to be heard? If not, I'll invite the sponsor to close. Senator Ada. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, again, I just want to reemphasize that the projected $8 million shortfall uh, was a figure that was uh, put out by the Office of Finance and Budget and um, the Bureau of Budget and Management uh, concurred similarly that that's also their projection of what the shortfall will be to the Territorial Education Facilities Fund. Um, so I, I would just, you know, I just move. Let's 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 send the the bill down to Bill 374. I know that there are staunch opponents here for any kind of a tax increase, even if it smells like a tax increase. So you know we can go into the committee the whole all day long, and it's probably not going to change any positions. So let's take it down to the voting file. Let's put it on record. Let's vote on it, and um, and 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 move on from there. Thank you. Suzu Smasi, Senator Ada. On the motion to move Bill 374 as introduced into the third reading, any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. We'll take a brief one minute recess. The legislature is back in session. We'll now take up the next bill on our agenda, Bill 364, and I invite Senator Uggen to give his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move for the placement of Bill number 364-34-COR, which is an act relative to... I'll go ahead and read the whole thing then, rather than the subtitles. An act relative to exempting the application of a of subsection 5127 of sub article C, article 2, chapter 5, title 5, Guam Code annotated, from the administrative jurisdiction granted to the office of the mayor of Talafofo and the municipal planning council of Talafofo for the use of lot number block for, lot number 1, block 14, track 2831, municipality of Talafofo for the purpose of constructing a recreational sports facility and authorizing the office of the mayor of Talafofo and the Municipal Planning Council 
of Talafofo to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Guam Football Soccer Association for the use of said real property for a term not to exceed 30 years. And I'd like to move for the placement of this proposal in the third reading for consideration by the body, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Please proceed. Madam Speaker, earlier uh, during this particular term, there was legislation that was passed that identified approximately seven acres within the wonderful or beautiful southern village of Talafofo and set aside that parcel of property specifically for the construction of a sports facility. Well, since then, since the passage of Public Law 34-60, the mayor of Talafofo as well as the Municipal Planning Council and the Soccer Association uh, came to an understanding with a memorandum of agreement on the use of that property. The investment of the people of Guam of providing the use of seven acres will translate into the Guam Football Association constructing the facility and maintaining it for the sports, the development of soccer sports on island as well as the, the use by the community. I want to thank the members of not only the organization but the various sports organizations who have communicated with their offices, many of the senators' offices over the course of the last several weeks. Because I was, uh, one of our colleagues came up to me yesterday and he said, Is, are all these email messages gonna stop? I said, well, it, a lot of it is contingent on the action of this body and how we move forward with bill number 364, that's 34. And I bring that up because these individuals are very passionate about not only allowing the use of uh, seven acres in Talafofo, but they're already anticipating the construction of a world-class facility almost similar to the Harmon uh, soccer field that was previously constructed by the Guam Football Association and continues to be maintained by that organization. So Madam Speaker, I ask for your consideration. I ask for the, the support of all of the members of this body to allow for this legislation to proceed and to ensure that the Guam Football Association, which continues to claim that in fact they have the financial means and the resources to construct the facility and they want to begin as soon as possible upon the passage of this legislation, allow that organization to proceed and to develop the sports facility specifically for our youth, not only in the South, but island-wide. So Madam Speaker, I ask for your consideration and your support. One other item, I know that there was a repeated request by a representative of the Soccer Association about the language being modified. Um, Madam Speaker, that language was presented before the introduction of this legislation to our legal counsel asking if in fact that language would be necessary and the response that was given to us at that time is that it's not necessary because the MOA at, is consistent with the allowance that will be provided the 30-year timeline on the use of the property so that's why I am not at this point in time moving for any further amendment of this legislation based on the guidance of the, our legal counsel. Thank you very much Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Uggen. On the main motion, any member wish to be heard? Senator Estevez, you're recognized. Madam Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I certainly rise in support of this measure. Um, I will be very honest. Yes, there's absolute bias here. Being, being from the South, um, I do believe that we need more recreational facilities down there, especially sports facilities. Oftentimes, families um, associated with various sports have to make the trek up north to fight traffic, uh, particularly um, for their children to be able to participate in these team sports uh, for the development and for the recreation of, of the youth. Um, however, I do have one point of concern and a question if the author would so yield. Please proceed, state your inquiry. If, and, and the question is, um, whether or not the stipulation and MO, MOA, does this absolutely restrict this facility for use only for soccer? Uh, because as we know, space is limited in the south and the development of facilities and this large plot of land being directed or provided to one particular sport and one particular um, 
organization. My concern is that it would limit the development or use of other uh, members of our community and other, other enthusiasts in youth sports from being able to utilize either the facilities or the property for 30 years. Thank you, Senator Stevis. Senator, again, do you yield? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much, Senator, for that question. That question, and I'm looking through the committee report at this, at this time, and that question was posed during the course of the public hearing on this legislation, and the response was, yes, it would be a use particularly, specifically for soccer activities. And just so that the good Senator understands the plans, the longer-term plans in regards to the village of Talafofa and the sports activities, one of the reasons why they're pushing very aggressively on acquiring this property so that they can proceed with the development is that presently the baseball facilities in Talafofo, right across the elementary school, is being very actively utilized by all the different sports organizations. Baseball, also for soccer purposes, also for some of the other sports activities within the village. So the mayor has asked that the legislature seriously consider this so that the funding that has already been identified, I believe it's in excess of a million dollars, can be utilized to refurbish and to upgrade and to install lights in the existing ball field. And his claim, his statement was that until such time that the youth and the sports enthusiasts have an alternative field to use, it's difficult for him to just shut down the sports activity. So he's asking for the consideration of the legislature so that the funding that was already, has already been identified and set aside specifically for the upgrade of the existing baseball field can be utilized quickly so that that would be for baseball, some of the other sports activities, and this would be specifically for soccer. Also being mindful, the good senator knows that uh, when funding is being provided by an external organization, on a continuous basis. So the facility will be constructed, the sports inclusive of, of building structures that uh, certainly one of the commitment is that they're gonna continue to provide funding and resources to maintain that facility. And that's really where the world-class facility will continue to, that will be constructed as a result of the eventual, hopefully the eventual passage of this legislation will continue to be maintained without the use of any public funds. Thank you, Senator, and thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Again, Senator Stevis, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And a follow-up question. Um, you know, again, because I, I understand that, and I just wanted clarification and to confirm. Is the 7.7 .7 acres absolutely essential, or is there any way that the government can retain some of our property for future um, facility development? Not necessarily the the GFA FIFA facility, which is, as we've heard, is going to only be for soccer, um, but would we be able to retain any of that property for future development, such as um, a small football field for, like, the Southern Cowboys, or um, a field for use for Southern Rugby, or any other youth sport that might come up or need space, because I also know um, in previous conversations with the mayor that the baseball field, although it allows many people to utilize the field, um, baseball fields have specific criteria and the additional use does have an impact on the field itself and makes it more difficult to maintain and makes it a bit more difficult for usage by for the actual sport that it was intended. And so my, my question to the author is, is 7.7 .7 the dead minimum um, for what they need to construct the facility? Or would we be able to maybe have them have first pick of the area, um, but make a determination of an amount smaller? Thank you, Senator Stevis. Senator, again, do you yield? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the response to that question was also provided during the public hearing, and the representatives did request the use of the seven plus acres, specifically because of the terrain and the location of, of the proposed facilities is gonna be inclusive of multiple fields plus a structure 
that would be able to provide some additional support for the administration and the maintenance of the facility. So almost very similar to the Harmon soccer field that is presently in place. If you, say, if you take a look at that particular field, there are multiple fields that have been constructed and in addition to that, there, were, there are facilities that are in place specifically to provide support for the maintenance of, of that field. So in response to your question, the, the response that came from the representatives is that yes, the 7.7 7 acres is being requested specifically so that they can have that flexibility with the multiple fields as well as the facility. Final question, Madam Speaker. Would I be able to find the plans for the facility outlining the area usage in the committee report? Thank you, Senator Stavis. Senator again, do you yield? Thank you very much. Uh, and I really appreciate the, uh, the questions that the, the good senator is asking because these are all questions and information that the public needs to know. Um, in this particular case, a response with regards to any possible plans is that should this legislation pass through and they have use of the property, then they will immediately commission uh, an A&E and a designer to be able to provide that. And that will be part of the requirement to provide that to the Municipal Planning Council and to the community so that they can see what is planned for the use of the property. So as of the public hearing date, there were no designs in place, but with an anticipation that should this go through, that that design should be, uh, they should commence the process immediately and hopefully get the field up and running in less than two years. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Again, Senator Service, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I may have an amendment on the, on the matter, um, but I would like to make the motion that we recess for lunch at this time uh, to allow um, to prepare up the potential amendment and uh, to confer with my colleagues as to whether or not we're gonna, I would move forward with, with the amendment. We'll recess until 2 p.m.